Hi, this video is a extension of Lesson 3.7 and Lesson 3.7 was on solving problems that involve percentages. Um, and right now you can have your book open to page 182 and this extension is called Finding a Percent of Change. Now we worked on solving percentage questions but this particular section is finding the percent of change. And a percent of change means to find out how much of an increase or decrease in percent we have from the original amount. And if you look on page 182, they give you a little percent of change formula. And I'm going to kind of walk through that right now with you. All right. Percent of change is found pretty easily. You take the increase or decrease in change and we divide that by the original amount and that will get me the percent of change. Now, one thing we got to make clear that I think could be easily confused. I told you earlier in the year that the word change means a subtraction. If I ask you how much the temperature changed when it went from 100 degrees to 70 degrees, that's a subtraction problem. But that's different. That's asking you something different than if we want to find a percent of change. Percent of change is not a subtraction. That's actually just setting up a ratio when you're going to do a division. You just take the increase or decrease in that change and you divide by the original amount. <coughs> uh, another way to look at that would be in a proportion. Percent of change, you have your unknown percent out of 100, because remember percent means out of 100, would equal the increase or decrease of that amount divided by the original amount. So this formula you could also think of in a proportion. And that's what I just showed you here. I think probably the easiest thing to do would be to show you some example questions um, using this proportion or using this formula. And I think when you see a few examples, it will make, it'll make perfect sense to you. So why don't you take a look at number one on page 183, and here's the directions. It says, identify the percent of change as an increase or decrease, then find the percent of change. <coughs> so in question one, let's talk about that first of all. Oh, I went too far here. I don't know why that did that. Okay, so question one, here's the first issue. Our original amount is 16, and the new amount is 20. Well, I think everybody can think through that, that starting at 16, finishing at 20, we definitely have an increase. So maybe I should just write that here. Number one is definitely an increase. I want to find my percent of change. So here's the first thing. I'm going to use a proportion. I don't know what that percent is. So this unknown percent out of 100 equals, let me go back to the previous slide, I want to figure out that increase or decrease divided by the original amount. Well, here's where, that, here's where the word change and subtraction comes into play, all right? Maybe I can just write this off to the side. If my original amount is 16, if my original amount is 16 and my new amount is 20, can you see how we changed by 4? Okay, there was an increase of 4 when you go from 16 to 20. And then going back to my previous slide, we're going to take that increase of 4 and divide it by the original amount, which in this case, the original amount was 16. Well, there's a proportion. All I need to do now is cross multiply, use cross products. 16x equals 400. Divide each side by 16. And I'm finding out that 400 over 16 is 25. And remember, these were percentages. I am showing you that we had a 25% increase. 25% increase. I hope that made sense. Oh, all right. Let me erase what I have here so I can go on to the next question. Let's go to number three. Question number three says we start with 80 and the new amount's 44. So let's, let's do that again. Original amount, 80, and uh, my new amount, 44. Okay, so the first thing we can tell in number three, we are definitely having a decrease. We started at 80, finished at 44. 
So I'm going to set up a proportion. First of all, my original amount, remember, let me go back a slide. The original amount is always in the denominator of this division. So the original amount's 80. Now my change, we went from 80 to 44. When you think of change, that's a subtraction. That's 36. We decreased 36. So that goes in the numerator. Remember, the increase or decrease goes in the numerator. We decreased 36. I guess I put a little arrow going down. And that decrease of 36 out of 80 would equal what percent out of 100? Well, we're going to use cross products. I'll take 80 times x, which is 80x, 100 times 36, which is 3600, divide each side by 80, and I'm finding out that this, in this case, starting at 80 and dropping to 44 is a 45% decrease. Like if that was money, if I started with 80 bucks and lost $36 and I had 44 left, I've lost almost half my money, almost 50% of that amount. So 45% decrease. Here's one more to walk through. Um, in question 7, it says find the new amount. It says increase 14 by 45%. So this problem, we're going to use the same formula or the same proportion but it's asking me something different. In number seven, they gave me that I have a 45% increase. So I started off with 45 over 100 because I have a 45% increase. 45% means 45 out of 100. My original amount is 14. I want to increase 14 by something. So my original amount is 14, and I'm trying to figure out right now how much of this increase is that? If I start at 14 and I have a 45% increase, how much of an increase is that? So I can use cross products. I'm going to take 100 times x, which is 100x. I'm going to take 45 times 14, which is 630, and I divide each side by 100, and I get a 6.30 increase. Now, you've got to be careful on this. If you just quit here and say the answer is 6.30 or 6.3, you have not answered the question. The question is find the new amount. Okay, the new amount isn't 6.30. The new amount is to take 14, which is what you started with, and you add 6.30 onto it. And when you do that, you get 20.3. That's the new amount. Okay, that's the new amount. So it's important that we actually answer the question being asked. Let's talk about finding a new amount like we did in question 7. There actually is a shortcut to that process. Okay, here would be an example problem to show you. Okay, I'm going to do it the way we did it in problem 7, and then I can show you a shorter, quicker method. So let's say you have $300, and you want to know how much you have with a 15% increase. Okay, this is simple. I start with 100. That's my original amount. Let me uh, turn my layer on here. I start with 100, and that's my original amount. Be good if I can spell. Here we go, original amount. Okay, and this is my percent increase. So when I set up a proportion, my 15% increase out of 100 would equal what kind of increase out of 300. Remember the increase over the original. Well, I would have to cross multiply. Uh, 100x equals 4,500. And then, of course, to get rid of times 100, I got to divide by 100, and I would get a $45 increase. I still haven't answered the question. The question is, how much do I have? So I now have to do one more thing. I got to take 300 plus 45 dollars, and that's 345 dollars. So that would be one way of finding out if I start with 300 and I have a 15 percent increase, how much do I have left, or how much do I have at the end? It's 4,500 dollars. I misspoke. I'm sorry. 345 dollars after my 45 dollar increase. Now there is a shortcut to that. Okay. What you can do to get that in one quick step is take 300 times 1.15 and get 345. Now, you might be wondering, where did I get this 1.15 from? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. 
you start with 300. That's all your money. All your money is 100% of what you have, right? This is all. This is all you have. You're going to add on 15%, your increase. Your increase is 15%. Well, if you take all your money and you add 15% to it, you will now have 115% of what you used to have. Well, that's what I did. I took 300 and I multiplied. Remember, the decimal for 115% is 1.15. I just took 300 times 1.15 and I got the $345 in one quick step versus all this. Now, if you want to do all this, that's fine. I'm, you'll never hear me complain one time. If you'd like one quick calculation to get it, that's how you can do it. Um, here would be another example of using this shortcut method, but this time with maybe sales. There's a $130 coat I want to buy, and I find out, wait a minute, there's a special 20% off. Well, I'm going to buy it. I've been waiting to buy that coat, and I'm getting a deal. So I want to find out what it's going to cost me. So doing it the first way, I know I'm getting 20% off. Let me turn on this layer. I'm getting a decrease of 20%. Now remember, 20% means 20 out of 100. And I need to find out, well, how much do I save if I get 20% off? And remember, the original price is 130, and the original amount always goes down here in the denominator. So I'm going to cross products. I'm going to take 100 times x equals 20 times 130. So 100x equals 2,600. I'll divide each side by 100, and I find out that I would save $26. There's a decrease of $26 in the price. I still haven't answered the question of how much the coat costs. I now have to take 130, subtract 26, and there's how much the coat cost, 104. Now, there'd be one quicker way of doing this. The quicker way would be to say, okay, the original price, the original or the total price, the original price is 100%. Right? I'm going to pay 100% of the cost. That's the original price. They're taking 20% off of that price, which means... I'm actually really only paying 80% of that amount. Well, how can I quickly find 80% of 130? Well, that's easy. You take 130 and you move the decimal two to the left. You take 130 times 0.80. And when you do that, you get $104 in one quick calculation. That's how we can figure the actual cost of the coat in one step versus all this. Now, if you want to do all this, if, that's, if you find that simple to understand, and even though it might take you a minute, you are getting it right, and you feel comfortable, well, then go ahead and do that. I don't have a problem. If you want to, there is a shortcut or a faster method, however, to getting that. One last thing that's going to be part of this uh, uh, assignment, I'm going to give you a worksheet, and it's going to also involve uh, I guess, again, some word problems and things regarding triangles and percentages. And so I just wanted to put this in here. I'm going to do a triangle problem with you and couple, highlight a couple things regarding this. First of all, when we have a triangle, there's a couple facts about a triangle that you need to know. And I think you probably do know some of these facts already. The sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle are 180 degrees. In other words, if I add up all three angles on any triangle, they must add up to 180 degrees. That's fact number one. I'm pretty sure that that's a fact you already know. Now, the second fact, maybe you do know, maybe you don't. It says if two sides of a triangle have equal measure, then the two angles opposite those sides have an equal measure. Okay? Here's what that means. If I have a triangle, and when I put single dashes in here, that means that these two sides are equal measure. Okay? That's what that little symbol means. Or if I had a double dash like this, that means these two are congruent. They're equal length. This second little theorem... Um, theorems are statements that are proven to be true, 
Okay, we know it's been proven to be true that all angles of a triangle must add up to 180. This has been proven to be true also that if two sides of a triangle have an equal measure, then the angles opposite them must have an equal measure. So what, this is what this means. The angle opposite this side is the angle not touching it. It's over here. So I'll put a little single arc in here to represent its measure. Well, the angle opposite this side is here. If these two sides are the same, then the angles opposite them must also be the same. So in other words, this theorem in this picture I'm showing you is saying that if I label this ABC, it's saying that angle A must have the same measure or be congruent to angle C. That's what the second theorem is telling you. So these are two facts about triangles that we should know and we need to know to answer the following questions. I'll do one quick sample question with you and then I can stop the video and if you have other questions we can talk about it in class tomorrow. Like question six, they tell me that I have a triangle and I have 5x, 4x, and 90 and I want to solve for x. I want to find out what x is. Well that should be easy. Remember, the three angles, angle one plus angle two plus angle three has to add up to 180 degrees based on what I read here. Well, angle one is 4x, angle two is 5x, and angle three is 90. Those have to add up to 180. Because I don't need the degree symbol in there now. I should simplify. Well, these are alike. 9x plus 90 equals 180. I can then subtract 90 from each side. 9x equals 90. This work should look very familiar. We've been doing it ever since the beginning of chapter 3. Divide each side by 9 and we just figured out that x equals 10 and I can check it. If I plug in 10 here, this angle is 40. And if I plug in 10 here, this angle's 50, 40, 50, and 90 do add up to 180. This work checks out. So anyway, that's what we'll be doing in class tomorrow. We'll be working on finding percents of change, and then we'll be doing a, a, a few questions again. Uh, we've done some questions similar to this, working with triangles and properties of triangles.